Hi, I'm Mr. B. During this video, I will explain how to make a polymer compound called plubber. You know, polymers are actually large molecules that are composed of smaller units called monomers. For example, starch and proteins are both polymers, where starches are composed of individual units of glucose and proteins are composed of individual units of amino acids. Flubber, on the other hand, is composed of a compound called polyvinyl acetate and sodium borate, which are mixed together in two solutions to form a pliable, bouncy substance called flubber. Let's see how to make flubber. In order to make flubber, we must rely on a lab activity called the flubber lab. The lab indicates that in order to make flubber, we need some glue and we need borax. Glue will provide the polyvinyl acetate molecules and borax is also known as sodium borate, which will actually catalyze a combination of polyvinyl acetate into long chains called flubber. So the first thing we have to do is to measure out 65 mL of warm water. In order to make flubber, we must rely on a lab activity called the flubber lab. The lab indicates that in order to make flubber, we need some glue and we need borax. Glue will provide the polyvinyl acetate molecules and borax is also known as sodium borate, which will actually catalyze a combination a polyvinyl acetate into long chains called flubber. So the first thing we have to do is to measure out 65 mL of warm water. To make the flubber, we must begin by using a protocol that is found on your lab sheet. This is called the flubber lab. So according to the flubber lab, we need two containers of 250 milliliter beakers. But these beakers are actually 400 milliliters. It doesn't matter about the size of the beakers. And in container one, we must place 65 milliliters of warm water. So I'll just say that this is container one. Now, using the same graduated cylinder, I'm going to measure out 80 milliliters of glue. Remember, the glue provides the polyvinyl acetate molecules that we need to make the flubber. Okay. Oops. I think that's about 80 ml. All right, so we got about 80 mLs of glue. And we're going to add this glue to the water. Since glue is very viscous, meaning that the, it flows very slowly, this is going to take some time to get all the glue out of the graduated cylinder. Remember, when measuring liquids in chemistry, always use a graduated cylinder. So I think that that's just about all the glue that we're going to get out of the graduated cylinder. You can see it's still flowing a little bit, but we're going to forego that because I want this lab to be short and fun. Now I'm going to take a splint, a wooden splint, I'm going to stir the solution, the mixture together, which is going to form what's called a homogeneous mixture 
which is also called a solution. There we go. Now we have a homogeneous mixture. Now I'm going to add some food coloring. So this particular flubber should have a blue color. So, and depending on how, what your artistic talent is, you can either make it stir it a little bit to give it a little swirl at the end, or you can mix it all together thoroughly to form another homogeneous mixture. All right, very good. Now to my second beaker, I'm going to add 45 milliliters of water and 5 grams of sodium borate, also known as borax. I'm going to mix it together, but you can see that the sodium borate actually settles out of the solution a little bit. This form was called a heterogeneous mixture, which means that you can actually see some of the individual parts of the mixture. In a homogeneous mixture, it looks very uniform. In a heterogeneous mixture, you can actually see, and you can see right there, see the different parts of the mixture. At any rate, I'm now going to mix these two substances together. Now, after mixing them together and stirring, you can already see blubber beginning to form. And depending on how long I actually stir this, the more flubber I'll produce. So you can see that's quite a bit of flubber right there, right? And now I've almost used all my flubber. I have just a little bit of liquid left in the beaker, in the beaker. And I have a bunch of flubber here that I'm now going to take out with my hand. And I'm going to shape it into a ball at first. Wow. Oh, this is, this feels gooey. And as the flubber dries, it will become stretchy. Let's see if I can stretch it now. See, I can stretch it now. It's stretchy. Oops, and it broke. <clears throat> if I actually stretch this over the beaker, It'll make a nice little cap for it. Do you see? A nice little cap. And if I, oh man, it's, it's really getting, it's really getting uh, really harder or firmer now. Now it bounces. See that? It bounces. Wow. This is really good. I think I have some good flubber here. See? It shape it into a ball. If I roll something over it, like this beaker, it will flatten out. <coughs> but anyway, this is flubber. It's fun to play with. I could play with this all day. And you can shape it into really cool things. For example, a bracelet. Okay. All right, enough of that. So anyway, that's how you make flubber. Now I would like for you to go to the conclusion question in the lab and try to answer the nine questions that are there.